it's great in the sense that it's providing this very basic level of automation for a standardized workflow. Key point there is it's standardized, right? I need to have standard inputs to produce the standard outputs that the bot uh, is ultimately looking to, to process, right? And so, you know, whether that's, hey, we have an intake form and we, you know, post maybe a job requisition on our, on our website and uh, that intake form maybe needs to be standardized, right? You know, like, the business analytics and automation department can't have a different job description format than like, mm -hmm. you know, the ideatician team, right? Like that doesn't, that doesn't work um, in order for robotic process automation to be able to process that. That's where I think I see the potential with robotic process automation coupled with chat GPT is the opportunity to take those unstandardized inputs, process them, standardize them, and then have that automation layer on top of it through RPA to be able to address more of the, the volume or the initial like, you know, processing volume, right? That is so interesting. I've never heard of it being used in that fashion because what you're really saying, you're using it as a transformation layer, right? If we go yeah. back to like the totally. old ETL tools, the extract, transform, load, you're using ChatGPT basically to replace that transformation step automate that transformation so that we can ingest this data into an RPA solution that triggers off some type of action and automates the process. I think that's ingenious. Or like, what if it's, what if it is the trigger, right? Like what, you know, yeah. like so often we are waiting like to the point of like going back to warranties, right? Like if let's say we work through chat GPT, we realize you needed a warranty Yes, it's applicable for whatever product we need to go forward with processing, you know, that return. That could totally, right? Like time to process the return, totally pick up an RPA layer there to make those changes, both like sending that return validation to the consumer and also doing the necessary return from a backend perspective, from an accounting perspective to be able to, to pull that off. Um, I am so glad you brought that up. <laughs> because uh, OpenAI released their plugins, right? Oh, and so no for the way. first time, we're having integrations to third-party applications that allow nice. ChatGPT to interact with their core services. For instance, they have integrations to Expedia, Kayak, Instacart. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. And for the first time, we're able to use ChatGPT build applications that interact with say Expedia's information and go book hotel rooms. It's what you were discussing a second ago, right? Yeah. We are taking ChatGPT, asking for information that it's sourcing from the integrations core website. And then it's triggering an action such as booking a hotel room, utilizing that third party application. I mean, that Game is changer. the future. That's how we're starting to see this evolution of ChatGPT being used for businesses. And so I'm really glad you brought that up. <laughs> well, and personally, selfishly, as someone who travels a lot, that's very nice. Right. <laughs> I probably right. spend a good 10% of my, you know, my day to day, like figuring out, oh, like, what's the best deal on this flight that I have to take, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's time consuming, right? And so and why is. not offshore or outsource that work to something that can do it much quicker than us? 